today we're going to continue on our top-down shooter tutorial. Last time we had this problem where we, I thought we fixed the, uh, what the diagonal movement, that's what it's called, where you can only move, where, because you, normally we have a problem where we move faster diagonally than we do to the right or to the left. And I couldn't quite find any other fix than doing this, which is setting the, uh, velocity to be equal to a speed instantly which makes us move from a speed of zero to a full speed instantly and we don't want that we want our acceleration to to take us off or so to speak so we want to slowly start at zero and then build up to full speed and I found the solution to how to do this so what we want to do is our, our problem before was that we had it like this plus equals acceleration this one's not plus equals this one plus equals acceleration so that's all fine so our y, y coordinate would or our velocity x would go up 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 until we hit the uh by, by the acceleration amount each frame until we clamped it at our speed but that didn't stop it from going slow or faster at the uh diagonal speeds because we still have a uh, an x velocity of 3 and a y velocity of 3 when we're going diagonally which means we'll go at a distance of like 4.2 or something um, and we don't want that we want to make sure that the distance that we're going is maximum the, at the max our speed so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a new variable in here and we call it call gonna call it um, current speed like this and we're going to set it equal to point distance because we're going to use this function right here to measure our our current speed so we get all our current speed vector how long that is so if and then we're going to check if it's bigger than our speed then we want to set it equal to our speed if we'll go through it so we'll take uh, and mesh out a distance from zero, zero to our velocity at x and our velocity at y co at the y coordinate. So right now it'll get our uh, the the length of our velo of our velocity vector right here. So in the right and left movement here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if and then we're gonna use the absolute this one abs function which takes the absolute value which means if it's negative or positive will al always return the positive amount so negative negative three will be positive three when you use this so we're gonna take the the absolute amount of speed and if that is bigger than or equal to our speed then what we want to do is we want to have velocity x like this equal length the x and by this and the speed else we want to have the uh, the velocity vector go up by our acceleration like this so let's just briefly go through this we're checking to see how long our vector is then what we're going to do is we're going to check if our current speed, if it gets over our speed limit, that is three in this case, what we'll do is we'll put it down to three. So if it goes to 3.01, we'll smack it down and we'll put it to three. And otherwise, if it's below that, we're gonna use our acceleration to accelerate it up. And we're gonna do exactly the same as this one, just down here in the Y department. And we're just gonna change this out for Y and Y there we go like that and save it and play this so as you should see now um, it should work hopefully so as you, yeah, as you can see we can go to the left or to the right and it's gonna be minus 3 in either direction and if we go diagonally it's gonna cap to 2.12 but we are still gonna have our acceleration going up I don't know if you can see it but it just it goes up like we aren't moving instantly we do have some 
it's pretty instant, almost instant. But we could also just lower the acceleration by like, so put it to like 0.1 instead, then you can easily see it. So if we go the, here and play the game again, so I've just set the acceleration to be 0.1, so now we'll really slowly go up like this bloop. And that's also true for the direct diagonal movement. So that's pretty cool. So now that we have that done, all we want to do is we want to do some collision checking. Because we want to have some objects, some walls that we can collide into. Um, so we want to do that right down here. We're going to make two slashes and three dashes or whatever. And we're going to do collision right here. Collision like that. This is where we're going to do a collision because right now we're going to add a new object which is going to be our walls and we're going to do some collision with them. So in here in sprites let's create a new one and that's called SPR wall like that. Resize it to be 16 by 16. There we go. We'll leave the origin at 0, 0.0 and then we'll open it up and we'll just color it uh, some color like uh, no, not red that's too faux-ish. Let's do a darker, this darker blue. That's the color I want to go with. You can choose whatever you want on it. It doesn't really matter. Then we're going to create a new object. It's going to be called a wall. And we want to just drop the sprite onto it. And that's pretty much all. Now we're done. Don't need that anymore. So, right now we want to do collision. So first of all, we actually don't want to do it in this step event, we want to do it in end step event. So we want to delete this x plus equals velocity and so on because we're going to do that in our collision. So what we are going to do is we are going this is going to be a bit advanced here than usual. Um, we're going to repeat. We're going to use the repeat function to repeat a set of code the amount of times that we put in here. So that's what the repeat function does. If you put in 10 here, it'll run this code inside of these brackets 10 times before going on to the next code. So what we want to do is we're going to want to repeat this for the absolute value of our velocity x. This one. And we actually don't need this clamp anymore because it's clamping itself right now. So we can actually just delete that. So we want to repeat this for our velocity x. So if it's if our velocity x is one, we're going to repeat it one time. If it's two, we're going to repeat it two times. Three, it's going to be three times. So what we want to do is we're going to want to have an if statement, and in here we're going to say if place meeting and we're actually put, gonna put the expla exclamation mark in front of it because what this does is it uh, reverses the meaning of uh, whatever function comes after so the place meeting function checks to see if there is an object at any given place at a, at a coordinate and if we put the exclamation mark in front of it we actually check if there isn't an object. So right now it would actually be more like something uh, if the place is free. But what we're going to do is we're going to have x. This is going to be our horizontal collision we're going to do right now in here. So if our x plus the sine value of velocity x, comma y, I'm going to explain the uh, sine just in a bit. Now, actually, let's go about it now. So, what we're going to do, we're going to do here, we're going to check if we're not placing or if we're not meeting an object at our x position plus the sine value of our velocity x. So, what the sine value does is it just takes whatever number we have and convert it down to 1 or negative 1 or 0. So, if our velocity is 1, or above 1 it's going to return 1 if it's less than 0 or less than minus 1 so let's say it's minus th minus 3 if our velocity is minus 3 then the sine value will be minus 3 one, minus 1 sorry and if it's 0 it'll be 0 so we're going to check at our x position plus 
one to either side whatever way we're going and our y position and then we're going to check for the o wall not, not, there we go a wall so if we're not placing or if we aren't meeting it then what we want to do we want to say our x plus equals sign of velocity x and then else so if we're not meeting anything right now we want to move one pixel in whatever direction we're moving and you have to remember this will happen the amount of times that our velocity is so if our velocity is at three we'll actually check one pixel if there's nothing there we're gonna move then we're gonna check the next pixel if nothing is there we're gonna move check the next pixel and then move so we're gonna do this three times before continuing in the code so even though it, we are technically only moving one pixel in this line of code, we're going to repeat it to the amount needed in order to uh, to move it the full amount that we want. So else, if there is something, we want to just set our velocity at x to zero because then we want to stop, and then we want to break out of the loop. There we go. So just write a break, and what this does is it just stops the loop loop so if let's say we have to repeat three times if we at this second run through of this code meet a wall then we're just going to break out of it and not do the last one and uh, this is smart because then we don't have to do another calculation that we don't need to do so we're going to just going to copy this over and we're going to do the y coordinates this time so start out by just putting the y co coordinates in here and instead of the x we're going to put in the y so we're going to check our pla place meeting at our y position or at our x position and then our y position plus sign of velocity at y for a wall and we're going to move if it's not there and if it is we're going to stop our vo y velocity so let's go into a room and then let's if you you can drag and drop objects in if you just do it like this but we can also just put the grid down to 16 by 16 then if you hold alt down you can just drag around then we can just drag them around and we can just make a lot of objects here if you click there we go so let's get this running there we go we have a player and we cannot collide with these guys now there is a little bug right now because as you can see if we go up to a wall and then we turn, we cannot we cannot move. And the reason for this is our hitbox is actually a square. So if we just go into the sprite here, let's go and preview the mask. This right here is our collision mask. This mask it is what we're going to that the place meeting function will calculate from. So it's gonna check if this mask is hitting any wall object. So what we actually want to do is, we want to first of all, what we want to do is, we want to do, we want to create, we want to duplicate this sprite here, because we're going to make a separate sprite that's going to be our mask, and then we're going to make sure that it does not turn. So we're going to re rename this to player mask, there we go. And it didn't want to do that, let's try again. There we go. So let's open that. This is our player mask. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a square and then we're just going to do like a square right here because we, we want it to be a little bit less than a, smaller than a player. Because whenever your player plays your game, you don't want it to be bigger than the player because it's more fun to have a bullet that maybe should have hit you to miss you than it is to have a bullet that shouldn't hit you actually hit you. So you would rather. The player doesn't think of it as cheating if it's in their favor, I guess. So um, let's go to the object player. So now we have this is our mask. So right here in the collision mask, we're going to use this sprite instead. Why the hell can I? T oh yeah, oh yeah, that one. And we're actually just going to open it and preview the mask and just make sure that it covers only the white parts because sometimes it can cover more or less. But let's just use it to uh, to do this and I'm actually not sure if this will do the trick we'll see 
I'm not really 100% sure that this will do the trick. If we move over to this wall, no, it'll still rotate. So actually, the trick to do, right in here, in the draw event of our player, instead of in here, in the step event, instead of setting our image ankle equal to the facing variable, we're just going to delete this, and then we're going to have the player always be this square, but in here we're going to just draw it so it looks like he's rotated. So instead of drawing self, we're just going to delete that. We're going to do draw sprite ext, like that. What this does, it, draws any, it can draw any sprite that you have in the game. And then it can scale it or rotate it and draw it at any position. So the sprite that we want to do is we want to use the variable sprite index which is a built-in one that, that this just refers to whatever sprite that we've given the player the sub image will be image index and though these right does the image index just changes what number of frame that we are on if there's an animation the x coordinate will be our own x coordinate and the y coordinate will be the our own y coordinate the x scale will just be image x scale the y scale will be image y scale so of course this will just be whatever the scale of our image is then we're going to have the rotation now this is where you could use image angle which will just put it to the normal image angle but this is where we're going to use our variable facing like this and then the color we're just going to use c white c for color and c white is just the basic color if you use any other color it'll be tinted in that color and the alpha will just be image alpha like that so now it should look exactly the same but it won't behave the same what the hell is I cannot there we go I keep spelling these wrong I don't know even know if I've spelled it correctly but I ha at least I have to spell it the same every time so as you can see we can still rotate and if we go up to the walls we can rotate while moving and we won't get stuck in the walls anymore, which is really neat. So now you have some really good collisions. You can collide with the walls. You're not going to glitch into the walls. You can actually have walls that are up to like one pixel thin because of the way that we did this. The wall can be as thin as one pixel and the collision will still work. So you don't even have to worry about the size of the walls with this, which I think is really neat. I think that's really cool. So that's all we're going to do for today. Oh, sorry. Next time we're going to do some shooting. We're going to finally start putting the the meat of this game into. We're going to do some shooting, and then we're going to add some enemies, possibly in the video after or in the same video, depending on how fast we get through the shooting thing. Um, but yeah, this is all for this time. So now you have you have the movement of the player. We can turn, and we can collide with this simple code right here. So we haven't actually made a lot of code um but yeah that is all for this time i really hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions or anything you can just ask in the comments or send me a message if you can still do that on youtube i don't know maybe you can try it out otherwise just leave a comment and i'll try to explain everything as good as i can and uh, yeah that's been all for this time i hope you enjoyed it have a nice day goodbye